Spaß, Deiner. Das ist gut, ja. Okay. Uh, my name is Maddie Butcher, and you're going to look at you the whole time. I'm going to look right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Maddie Butcher. I'm a professional artist. I do street art, illustration, and I also do concepts. And I'm originally from Birmingham, but I've lived in the Middle East for 10 years now. At school, I, I used humour to try and fit in, and I went to a school right in the centre of Birmingham where I think I was seen as quite eccentric, and I found that the art block, like I'm sure a lot of people find, is a, a place of escape. So I spent a lot of time in there during lunch times, or occasionally playing on my Game Boy. I was obsessed with Tetris. It was painting and Tetris and music were the three things that got me through being a teenager. And then uh, I went to uni to study fine art. But again, it was a toss up between either doing um, English language or literature or art. And it's very much a love of both. Uh, I didn't study to be a musician, but I definitely wanted to study either words or paintings. And paintings won. So during my art degree, I spent a lot of time doing animation. I spent a lot of time creating very weird little montages of photos that didn't make any sense. And then I ended up thinking, you know what? Maybe this isn't for me, I'm gonna do advertising. So I then became an advertising creative because I thought you couldn't make money from art. And that advertising was, I thought, more creative than the fine art world, which was the only place that our degree was kind of funneling us towards. We didn't have a chance to do graphics or animation really as part of our degree. And I wish we'd had that chance, but at the same time, you've got to make opportunities from what you study. And I didn't think that the fine art world or the gallery space was the one for me. When I first moved here, I came here straight from New York. So I lived in New York for about 18 months, 16 months. And I first came to Dubai, went into work in advertising, got a job as a copywriter, and I started going to a hip hop night and it tends to be from music that's, I've moved around a bit and I always find my friends probably through music scenes more than anything else. Uh, and I went to a hip hop night and obviously I met at least maybe four street artists and one in particular called Frez, who is Lebanese British and he, Lebanese Italian, Armenian British, he's a bit of everything. And he and a couple of Filipino heroes of mine and a British guy called Saya all took me to a place in Festival City, just the old Festival City, and it was an old go-kart track. And we all did some graph pieces, and I did the worst piece you've ever seen. They let me have their cans, which were expensive then, and they're expensive now. And they, I think I did a snail with a human face, and it just was terrible. And it will never be on my website, and you'll never get a picture of it. And they showed me how easy and accessible it was. And I found in New York that Gra graffiti or street art is quite a, it's not a clique, but it's quite a restrictive world in the fact that not everyone is allowed in. And I feel like that's still the case even now after working in it. And I think that the Dubai art scene is very fragmented. There's lots of different factions. And with any scene in any city, it's always about a series of individuals and then people around them that create a scene. And there has always been, in the 10 years that I've been in Dubai, there's always been at least maybe 12 to 15 individuals who are fighting to create that scene and, and succeeding. And definitely with the street art scene, because it's Dubai, because it's expats, people have come and gone and they've left that scene, but it has always been there and it has evolved and it's grown. And now there are different faces than there were when I first came here. Now there are a lot of the same faces still people that started doing it as a hobby and now doing it as a profession, and that includes me. And I really like how it's very multicultural and it's very multinational, but there is a distinct style. And when one of us gets better, all of us get better. It's definitely not about us competing against each other, which I think is the same in any field, whether it's comedy or music. When one person rises, everybody needs to improve their game. And if we support each other during that, then that's a good thing for a scene in any city. And I think that's what's been happening here for the last 10 years. Within graffiti, within the graffiti world, it's very masculine. It's very much, it started originally with taggers and it starts with gangs. And that's what was in the 80s and 90s. And you have a lot of people now holding on very tightly to that. And I find that very rigid. I find that to be almost like the establishment within graffiti. So my problem is I'm not a graffiti artist. I would never call myself a graffiti artist and 
if I was a graffiti artist, I wouldn't say it on camera, uh, but I will say professionally that I'm a street artist. Um, artists are always questioning, and certainly I questioned, why are we doing art? What are we doing it for? Who is it for? I find here that the problem is that um, artists expect to be paid for most of the journey, whereas there's a lot of work that we need to be doing on our own time. We need to be pushing ourselves, but we also will not give our time to a brand for free because when we push ourselves, we create value. And that's been the biggest challenge for me in terms of the last four years of doing it full time, that I need to know what my value is by creating it separately, not purely on a gig or brand basis. I can't become a good artist by purely working for brands. I need to be developing my own stuff as well. So graffiti art has got problems from two directions. It's got problems inside and outside. In this region, obviously, which is notoriously strict and they don't want messages that they can't control, then graffiti is seen as bad. But at the same time, all of the brands, all of the major developers that start from the government down want street art. Whereas here, brands will find, or brands or marketing agencies will find something that they like off Pinterest, and then they will give it to four different artists and go, can you do this, what's your price? And artists need to make a living. So here, people are very willing to paint. They're not willing to, but they will do it for a living. We'll paint another artist's work. And the bad side to that is the fact that there is a lot of copy culture. It's called biting in graffiti. So there's a lot of biters. And in some parts of the world, that's seen as more acceptable than in other parts. Like if you're a biter in New York, then people will destroy your artwork because it stole someone else's idea. And they will know that they did it with graffiti culture boys going gangs at night. It's about scoring points according to how inaccessible the place is where you spray. It's also about scoring points for the level of detail in an illegal spot, or it's about scoring for the style of your art. And that, to me, is a lot like when I take my dog walking around a neighborhood and he's leaving his mark across a neighborhood for the other artists or the other dogs to smell and recognize the identity and and with graph it's very similar, like you are leaving a name that's not your name, but other graph, other graffiti artists will recognise that name, they'll recognise that gang, they'll recognise your colour palette, your character or your style, and it's about marking your territory. And there is a lot of merits to that, but street art is a very corporate, very, very Dubai friendly art that is in conflict with that. And I find a lot of, I find a lot of personal conflict with these two worlds coming together in what I do for a living. The art industry is a pretty fragmented one anyway. Uh, brands understand the importance of street art and I've done spray painted pieces for premium watch brands and I've done stuff for sneaker brands and I've also done stuff for a lot of alcohol brands. There are types of brands that will work with it and then there are types of brands that want to play with it but they're not quite sure what they want to do yet. All of our jobs come from here come from brands and venues and there is more of a bigger pool of talent here so definitely there's a lot more competition in terms of getting those gigs now than there was five years ago. I, uh, there's always about 15 projects that I should be working on. Um, right now I want to see if I can try and fuse my abstracts with my portraiture and I am unfortunately trying to still work and find a job or a gig where I can do that in but I also should be doing it all the time in my spare time uh, when I'm not moving house. So for the final question, um, what advice would you give someone pursuing a career similar to yours? Don't take it personally if they don't buy the idea at first. Spend time building up a portfolio. I definitely started working full time before I needed to. I think I could have, I've got a far better portfolio now than I had when I first started and I think I still could have had the body of work that I've made, or at least half of it. I think pursuing a creative career, in general, I think cover all your bases. So I am a painter, but I'm also a copywriter. And I found that that enabled me to then not say yes to every single art job. Not because I'm trying to prove myself as an artist and I need to take, say yes to everything, but because I have the security of being able to earn a living elsewhere. So for example, if you want to paint, but you're also a graphic designer, don't throw away the graphic design. 
but build a body of work, build a portfolio while you still have some money coming in because otherwise you are throwing away an important safety blanket that actually enables you to be a better artist, not simply a safer artist. Buzzy, come here. Oi, dead. Come here. Hey, oi. Buzzy, up. Buzzy, up. He's knackered. Buzzy, come on. Are you dead now? Are you dead? Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All the energy spent at the start is because I shouted at him because he ran out the front door. Aww.